This is Ed Sussman for MedPage Today, reporting from the International AIDS Society in Rome, Italy. Today we learned that adolescents and young adults may be carrying a resistant form of HIV infection at the time that they are first diagnosed. Dr. Allison Agu of Johns Hopkins University presented the data today. And Dr. Agu, how prevalent is this resistant strain in these patients? Sure. I think first taking a step back to say why are we even looking at adolescents, about 50% of HIV infection is thought to have occurred in 15 to 24 year olds. So meaning of people who are presenting with HIV infection, it's thought about 50% of those individuals acquire their infection when they're adolescents or young adults. Um, so a big problem. In terms of resistance or primary resistance to patients who are acquiring their virus, we found about 10% of those adolescents and young adults coming in to care on their first resistance testing had drug resistance. <clears throat> Additionally, of those, uh, about 8% of the entire cohort had multi-drug resistance, so resistance to two or more drug classes already in their initial virus. These are very young patients and we will probably be wanting to be treating them for many, many years, many decades, hopefully. And yet they are already um, have burned through one or two classes of drugs. What is that implication for treatment? Right. I, you've hit it directly on the head. I think the, the problem is these are the, the younger patients have more life years ahead of them with HIV infection. And technically, we should be able to treat these patients for, as you've said, decades, 40, 50 years. There should be no reason why they should die from their HIV infection. But we know that these patients have lower likelihood of adherence, that's one, and already, as you said, they've burned through a couple of classes of agents, and so the implications are less drug to use for them and potentially a compromising of, of their life, their ability to survive long term with the virus. So real implications in terms of treatment as well as potentially transmission of additional resistant variants. Is there something that doctors um, should be talking to about these patients uh, to try and um, prevent them, or is this, or is the strain a virus that is resistant uh, so um, endemic that um, this is the type of situation we're going to be facing? Right. I think in terms of providers and what they should know, already the recommendation is genotypic testing should be done for all patients coming into care. So I think following that recommendation is key because that has then implications for what you design in terms of regimens. But I think beyond that, it is knowing that this group is one coming in resistance and so we have to think about when we craft their regimens, not only think about the kind of regimen you have to, to put them on to be able to, to address the virus they have, but also regimens that may have a higher barrier to resistance. So we know that these, group, these, these kids are more likely to be non-adherent. So thinking about putting them on a regimen that is a higher barrier to resistance would avoid then additional accumulation of resistance mutations and then further transmission of resistance variants, which may have, again, implications for transmission and survival. Thank you, Dr. Hecker. This is Ed Sussman, MedPage Today.